In this video, I'm going to show you the paintbrush tool. The shortcut is B. This is a really deep tool. There's a lot to it. And it only really makes strokes. I'm going to pick a dark blue for this one. I'm going to set the stroke weight down to one. And I'm going to go over here to the brushes panel. Now, if you don't see this, you might have to expand your brushes panel out a little bit. So if your panels are small, then just pop brushes out. And I'm going to start with this one, the charcoal feather brush. Now, if I was to do a line with this tool, you'll see that however long I make the line, the brush is stretched out along the stroke. There's other kinds of brushes here as well, though. I could use a regular five point round brush. And this ends up looking a lot like the blob brush tool did. But this time I am just making strokes and they remain strokes. I could change the stroke width and the width will then change. That's also true if I've got a pattern on the stroke and you'll see how it's working. It is repeating this shape across the length of the path that I drew, no matter how long or short it is. There are other kinds of brushes here as well, and I can use them by making a new brush with the paintbrush tool, or I can select an existing shape and then just apply the brush stroke that I want to use. Stroke always acts as a scale. So if you've got a complex brush, you'll probably want to use a one point stroke to draw it. Otherwise it could come on extremely big like this. Now, the default brushes that you find here have a kind of a sample, a representative only of some of these. Of the ones we've seen so far, we've got these brush tips, including some calligraphic options, which you can see are thicker and thinner depending on the angle of the stroke. And this is again especially useful if you have a graphics tablet. Now, I wouldn't bother choosing the basic brush because you'll find it'll often actually revert back to one of your other brush tips like this. Uh, so just go back to that five point round brush if you want a standard or just pick a new brush like this. Uh, basic, you'll there see it's just reverted back to the art brush instead. So ignoring basic, you've got other kinds of brush strokes like this, the mop which really does respond well if you've got a graphics tablet, because it will not only change based on the how hard you press the pen into your tablet, but it'll also respond to the angle that you're moving at and potentially produce some quite complex artwork. And you've also got this one at the end, which ends up being a pattern brush. And uh, you know, you can put these on shapes as well. You don't have to actually draw these with the paintbrush, you can make a shape and then just apply the stroke you want. And they do get very thick very quickly if you crank up the stroke width in some circumstances. Now, it's also possible to control exactly what's happening with the paintbrush tool when you make a stroke. And to do that, you'll want to double click the tool like we did with the blob brush tool. You can move between accurate and smooth, though I tend to leave mine around here. And if you wish, you can choose to keep selected and edit selected paths. Now, if you turn both those options on together, it means that when you do a line like this, it remains selected. And because of that edit selected paths, I can then continue that line. And it means I've got multiple chances to get the line that I want, potentially even joining back onto itself. Now, that kind of effect is not as useful when you're doing something like a charcoal feather, because if you draw multiple strokes, they will often extend or change that first stroke, which may not be what you want. So if it's not what you want, just turn those options off. Change the fidelity setting to whatever you wish, and you know you can change that as much as you like. Now, there's a few brushes here, but where do you get more? brush libraries, the corner of this. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next video.